Thanks for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Caitlin Burke. Egyptian military officials say wreckage from the Egypt Air Flight 804 has been found. The plane went down early Thursday morning without warning. Aviation officials say that within 20 minutes of the pilot's last contact with the control tower, the plane had vanished from radar. Charlene Aaron has the story. Passenger belongings and parts of the aircraft were found 180 miles from the Egyptian city of Alexandria. The search for the plane entered a second day after the jetliner vanished over the Mediterranean with 66 people aboard, 56 passengers and 10 crew members. Many suspect that terrorism is likely to blame, including the possibility of an inside job at an airport. The possibility of having a different action or go, uh, having a terror attack is higher than the possibility of having a technical If it was terrorism, it would be the second deadly attack involving Egypt's aviation industry in seven months. Last October, a Russian passenger plane that took off from an Egyptian Red Sea resort crashed in the Sinai, killing all 224 people aboard. Russia said it was brought down by a bomb and a local branch of ISIS claimed responsibility. Thursday's disaster also raises questions about airport security. Western Europe has been on high alert after the deadly Islamic extremist attacks in Paris and at the Brussels airport and subway in the past several months. French officials say that airport security had been tightened considerably before the disaster because of the coming European soccer championship, which France is hosting. Meanwhile, grieving family members of the 66 people on board are seeking answers. I am um, very um, tired. Um, um. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Abortion could soon be a criminal offense in Oklahoma. A new bill passed by lawmakers Thursday states that any doctor who performs an abortion in Oklahoma could be charged with a felony and punished with up to three years in prison. The measure is the first of its kind in the nation. It would also restrict any physician who performs an abortion from obtaining or renewing their Oklahoma medical license. The governor of Oklahoma has not yet decided if she will sign the bill. Hampton Sydney College in Virginia has fired Army Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin over comments he made against the Obama mandate on transgender students and public school bathrooms. Boykin joked at a public event that the first man who goes in the bathroom with his daughter won't have to worry about surgery. Although Boykin says everyone there clearly understood he was joking, the LGBT community claimed he was calling for violence against transgendered people. Boykin says that wasn't the case. Boykin praised Hampton Sydney as a very good school, but he said on his Facebook page that he believes politically correct speech is smothering free speech in America. Tennessee lawmakers are pushing back against an ACLU complaint over a public school bathroom policy. The group says Sumner County schools discriminate against transgender students by requiring them to use the bathroom of their sex at birth. Officials say school policy should protect all students, not just a select few. Our goal in filing the OCR complaint was to ensure that transgender students and our client are treated fairly by the school system. The ACLU is supposedly protecting the rights of those one or two students. Who's protecting the rights of the 29,000 students? State lawmakers say for the majority of students, this is a privacy and safety issue. The ACLU says transgender students are more likely to be singled out and bullied because of the policy. Both sides are waiting to see if the Department of Education will step in. Evangelist Franklin Graham is urging Christians to vote this election year, even if, quote, it's for the lesser of two evils. Graham spoke to a crowd of thousands in Lincoln, Nebraska, during his 24th stop on his Decision America tour. Graham says believers should vote for candidates who at least consider their concerns, and it's a necessity to bring God back into politics. A second Nigerian girl who was kidnapped by Boko Haram is now free. She's one of the 276 who were kidnapped in 2014. An Army spokesperson says she was among a group of 97 women and children rescued in northeast Nigeria. Her rescue comes just two days after the escape of the first Chabot girl. 
The young woman was flown to Abuja Thursday with her infant daughter to meet with the Nigerian president. She told the president some girls had died, but many remain in captivity. In all, 219 Shabak girls remain missing. Coming up, meet Deanna. She has ALS and it could kill her in three to five years. Hear how a treatment developed by her dad could lead to a cure after this. Staying active and keeping your schedule full could keep, help keep your mind sharp as you get older. Health Day News reports a study of older adults found that those with heavy schedules tended to do better on tests of memory, information processing, and reasoning. The study doesn't prove that being busy makes people smarter, but the leader of the study says it's likely that being busy is good for your thinking abilities. Other studies have found that learning new skills can help older adults improve their mental abilities. It's a brutal wasting disease that slowly robs the life of its victims, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Patients lose their ability to walk, talk, eat, and eventually even their ability to breathe. But now there's hope for ALS victims through a new treatment that's gaining ground. I know, you can do that easy. Deanna Tadone was a beautiful bride and a recent law school graduate when her doctor told her she didn't have long to live. And he said, you have ALS. And at that moment, I felt like I left my body. Deanna's father, an orthopedic surgeon, was shocked by what little help was available. We took her to all the various citadels uh, that specialize in ALS. And uh, to my chagrin, uh, there was nothing that could be done for her. Unable to accept defeat, Dr. Tadone devoted himself to developing a treatment to help his daughter. I call myself the resident guinea pig. Finally, one worked, meaning it significantly slowed the progression of Deanna's ALS. He calls it the Deanna Protocol. It consists of supplements like AKG. So we put her on the AKG, and then we ran out of it. Within one day, her tremors became unbelievable. Okay. Put her back on it, got some more, put her back on it, the tremors subsided. Dr. Tadone chronicled his daughter's success online. Soon dozens of other people with ALS tried the Deanna protocol and experienced similar results. People like Anthony Tapazzi, the former president of the Mississippi Power Company. Six months ago, I had a problem with excess saliva. I don't have that problem today. Uh, my voice is better than it was. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was. I couldn't drink water or take a pill without feeling like I was going to choke to death. Today, I'm taking probably 30 pills a day. I don't even think about it. I could only eat soft food six months ago. Uh, I'm eating steak, ribs, anything I want today. Of the people who tried the Deanna protocol, 75% report it slowed the progression of their ALS and reduced symptoms such as twitching and difficulty walking. Interest in the Deanna protocol led researchers at the University of South Florida to study its effects on mice with ALS. It's important to recognize that the animal model that we use uh, is very aggressive and is, is probably uh, you know, significantly more aggressive than uh, the human form of ALS. The mice on the Deanna protocol had improved neurological scores increased motor function, and most importantly, survived longer than the mice who weren't. I think it's pretty remarkable that, you know, there's many, there's hundreds of drugs and, you know, experimental compounds that are being screened uh, with this animal model. And relative to what's out there, I think, you know, this is, this is proven to be probably the most effective thing out there that's readily available to, to the general public and to ALS patients. 
Results of the Deanna Protocol mouse study were published in two leading medical journals. To me, it's a, it's a very important finding, and I think doctors, neurologists need to uh, acknowledge the results of this study and the feedback from patients, and I think they should uh, recommend it as a therapeutic option for their patients. So while a cure for ALS appears to be a long way off, some patients are at least able to slow the progression of the disease with the Deanna protocol. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Up next, they're Cuban refugees hoping for a better life in the United States, but they have to take a huge detour to get here. Find out where these refugees are winding up when we come back. Today, tens of thousands of Cuban refugees are doing their best to come to the United States, even if it means a difficult and dangerous trip through Central America. Chuck Holton tells us why these Cubans are risking so much to come to America while they still can. President Obama's historic trip to Cuba in March signaled a thaw in relations between the two countries. While it may lead to resolving some long-standing disputes, it may leave some challenges hanging as well. This includes policies on immigration favoring Cuban asylum seekers. Under the so-called wet foot, dry foot rule instituted in 1995, any Cuban migrant who made it onto U.S. territory would gain an expedited path to legal permanent residency. But if caught offshore, they would be returned to Cuba. Over the last 10 years, an average of 10,000 Cubans migrated each year. In 2015, that number jumped to 43,000 because many Cubans believe better relations could end the current policy and its special immigration benefits. Levon Buyain taught English for more than 20 years. He recently left Cuba by way of Ecuador. I am here uh, because I, I, I want to get out from my country because of the economical situation. Uh, we are living for more than uh, 50 years, right? And also the political situation in my country is very difficult for our Cubans. So many of us are here to uh, try to get to the States to get a better life. Levon joins thousands of his countrymen currently making their way through Central America. Because of the political changes of Cuba and the United States, we think that the windows will be closed. So we are trying to get uh, faster to the States. Yeah, there are many uh, Cubans coming uh, from the borders of Colombia, Guyana, Venezuela, from Ecuador, from many countries of Latin America. No matter where they begin, all who take the land route must pass through Colombia where virtually each one is robbed of everything. Rosa Guerrera was one of them. Look, in Colombia, many women were raped, robbed, threatened with pistols, machetes, both by the Colombian police and by civilians. Angel Hernandez nearly lost his granddaughter. And he pulled out a pistol and pointed it at the baby. And he said, money or I kill the girl. And I had in my pocket $4,775 and I gave it to him. Once they reached Colombia's northern border, they faced their biggest trial so far, a 40-mile stretch of some of the roughest jungle on the planet, the Darien. Without money for a boat, they have no other choice but to walk. So far this year, tens of thousands of Cubans have arrived here in the Puerto Via Visa. This is the Panamanian end of the road in the Darien jungle. They've already been walking for four to nine days through the jungle to get to this point. And by the time they get here, many of them are near death. Trench foot, bug bites, and prickly heat are common. And there are reports that dozens died from the sweltering heat. <laughs> Costa Rica closed its border to migrants in April. On May 9th, Panama officially closed its border with Colombia to stem the tide of immigrants walking north. But with so many square miles of jungle to cover, it's almost impossible to enforce. Panama is struggling to care for those already here, and dozens more arrive every day. A few have obtained flights to Mexico, but with most left penniless, they aren't sure where they'll go from here. More than a thousand are housed temporarily in this camp along the Costa Rican border. While the way forward may be in doubt, they're trying to keep their hopes up. We can even find solutions for many things, for many problems, right? In the end, I am not here alone. We are all here together. We're one family. From Panama, I'm Chuck Holton for CBN News. 
The type of desperation that sends people on these journeys is just unimaginable. Stay with us, we'll be right back. They say everything is bigger in Texas, even their love for food. But one restaurant is also attracting customers for its love of the Lord. Tracy Winborn has that story. Welcome to Taste of Texas. This landmark steakhouse in Houston is famous for selling certified Angus beef. You could also call it a museum of Texas history with guns on the wall and artifacts and documents from heroes of the wild frontier like Sam Houston and Davy Crockett. But there's more to this restaurant than meets the eye. The owners call it their mission field. So when we get to work in the morning, we walk this huge 18,000 square foot, 500 seat restaurant and pray for all that God will bring to us on this day. Uh, because this is our ministry. My wife is very faithful about that. She will walk, and I'll go with her, but she's the, she's the instigator of this. She'll walk the four corners of the building and pray for the employees and the customers. Ed and Nina Hindi are bold about their Christian faith. This is the first thing you see when you walk through the front doors, a cornerstone with two scriptures proclaiming God's faithfulness. And then once inside, customers are greeted with Christian music. In the restaurant business, I was taught a long time ago, there's two things you don't ever talk about. Uh, one is religion and the other is politics. Well, th those are two subjects that are near and dear to our hearts. Religion, of course, our faith being our first and foremost. The doors of Taste of Texas opened 38 years ago. Today, it's the largest independently owned restaurant in the state and the top 30 in the country. They serve thousands of customers each week and employ more than 200 people. TripAdvisor listed as number four out of nearly 7,000 restaurants in Houston, but it wasn't always this successful. When your business is not doing well, I mean, you, you find yourself on your knees in prayer, in anguishing prayer. Uh, and, you know, it wasn't too far. And we asked, I finally just asked, well, Lord, what do you want me to do? At a time when we were really broke, uh, we borrowed $10,000 to open. And at the end of eight years, we were a quarter of a million dollars in debt. And God encouraged us to be persistent. So the Hendys committed the restaurant to the Lord, and their persistence paid off. While the steakhouse rich in Texas history may go down in history itself, the trials didn't end there. In 2010, they lost their son in a skiing accident. He was married to an, a beautiful young woman. They had three small children. And in a blink, he was gone. He caught an edge skiing, hit a tree, tore his aorta, and was gone in the blink of an eye. And when you get that phone call, uh, it, you know, it shakes you really all the way down to your, to your foundation. It didn't shake our faith. But it did cause me, and, and I, I guess anyone involved in that situation, to sit down and just say, okay, in the midst of this storm, what do I really believe? Ed says Christians often find themselves in a storm or in between storms, but can take comfort in knowing that God is there in the midst of it. That's certainly been the case for the Hendys. About a year ago, a twin-engine plane Ed was piloting crashed when someone put the wrong fuel into it. It'd be like putting diesel in a Porsche and then just enough for us to get back up in the air again before both engines quit and we found ourselves uh, in a cloud layer over East Texas and we came down right on a highway and lived the walkway, opened the door of the plane and walk out and that is absolutely a miracle of God. Ed says he's happy to have an extra year added to his life. Now he's going on year two. In the meantime, he and his wife and their entire family will keep running Taste of Texas as they make plans to expand. And they will continue honoring the Lord with their lives and even their restaurant decor, displaying true Texas tales of the famous frontiersmen who were also passionate about their Christian faith. Tracy Winborn, CBN News. 
That's it for now on CBN Newswatch. You can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care about most at CBNNews.com. And tell us what you think about the stories you've seen here. You can do that on Facebook or at CBN News on Twitter. We hope you'll join us next time. Have a great day.